So we're gonna be doing some six by six uh, tiles on this pub surround. So what I'm gonna use is one of my favorite thin sets made by Ardex, Ardex X5. What's really great about this stuff is that it has a very long pot life for when you mix it and have it in the bucket. So it gives a DIYer or someone, even anybody with experience, gives them a lot of time to be able to set the towel, make your accurate cuts and things. So really helpful to have a long period of time. In my experience, it's been at least three hours. I'm not afraid to take a phone call or take lunch using this stuff. So uh, I highly recommend it. And on top of that, it has a very nice non-sag quality to it. So when you put the, the, the thin set on the wall, uh, it doesn't sag down and that helps the tile stay into place. So that's really helpful when you're doing mosaics or doing any type of small subway tile or even these six by six, it makes a real big difference having a non-sag quality to it. So always pay attention to how much water to add to this. You, it's not really a visual thing. It's more of a, a science. So make sure you have the right ratios. Use a measuring um, bucket to get the right amount of water. So in this bag, it's between six and seven quarts. I like to go right there in the middle at six and a half. So order of operation, setting your wall, back wall first, the side walls to your shower, and then going into the wainscoting around the bathroom. Okay, so a couple of tools that make this easy um, for you for installing this. Even though these are six by sixes and we made sure that our walls were flat prior to installing the backer board in the membrane, it's still really nice to use some kind of a leveling system. So these are called uh, Tucson leveling clips. And what's great about them is that they're it's just a one part system. So you just basically put these together. You'll see me doing this over and over again, but basically you just pinch the wall tile together. One thing I've found is that when you have direct down light like this, especially on the back wall, you, you'll see any type of unevenness really, really easily. It'll create shadows on that back wall. And believe me, I've had, this is from experience here. That's why I really am a big fan of a leveling system, even with small tiles like this, because it just is an insurance to make sure that your wall is flat. If you try to do this without it, you can certainly get a flat wall, but you're more subjective to having issues or having some kind of lippage. And these down lights do not, are not forgiving when it comes to that. You'll see the shadow and you'll immediately see the uh, unevenness on the tile. It's just all about the angle of the light hitting it and it really makes a big difference. So we're gonna be using these Tucson leveling clips. As uh, redundant as it seems on such small tiles, it just really helps out, makes it a lot easier. Uh, we're also gonna be using basically a combination uh, quarter by quarter inch trowel. It's not actually square notch trowel. As you can see, it has some different edges to it. This is gonna provide uh, the ability for those ridges to collapse and get good coverage on the back of your tiles. We're also gonna be back buttering. Back buttering your tiles are really important and make sure that you get the full coverage on it. But we're gonna test this when we actually start setting the tile to make sure that we're getting the right coverage. You really can't just uh, blanketly say this is the trial that you use for this because it really depends on the substrate that you're going over and making sure that you're getting the right coverage. So you always have to test your tile. And if I'm not getting it, I'm gonna move up to the next trial size so that I can get that coverage. But back watering will ensure that. Margin trowel, this is just gonna help uh, feather out some of that thin set. So when I put my leveling clips in, I'm not squeezing thin set in between those joints and causing more cleanup than it needs to be. Um, I do have a couple sets of grinders here. One has a blade that will grind down tiles. So if uh, I'm having problems like in the corners or this overlap, I can ground on, grind down the back of the tiles, get them nice and even. It's also great for scribe cutting, just getting some additional extra, uh, you know, more fine tuning your cuts. I also have another grinder that I will have a good blade on, a good diamond blade. This helps for scribe cutting and doing those additional cuts. And then what I'll probably mostly be using is this one that I have a apparatus for taking the dust out of the room. So when I use this, 
it automatically turns on the dust extractor. And then this, I'll be doing so a lot of the cuts in the corners. Uh, that's one nice thing, starting out tiling on this back wall, you're not gonna have to be super accurate with your cuts because you're gonna have this wall that will over, over cover the, any of those cuts in the corner. So it kind of gives you like on your first wall a little bit uh, getting used to using the tools. And if you're not accurate, it's not a big deal just as long as the tiles overlap uh, that back wall. Rubber gloves, you wanna use that with the thin set. And then obviously we already have our laser set. So those are the main things along with spacers because we're gonna be using some 16th inch space lines. Now these six by sixes do have these little notch bump outs and you could butt them directly to each other, but you're gonna get less than a 16th inch grout joint. And I really kind of want to see the color uh, in those grout joints. And ultimately, I just feel like it looks a little bit better um, than, because I feel like in some ways, just having a really small grout joint like that kind of looks commercial, kind of looks like, um, you know, something you'd see in a commercial setting. So we're gonna put the 16th inch grout joints in here so that we can give us ours a little bit more room. We're also gonna be offsetting these. So they're gonna be more like a brick pattern rather than a straight pattern. That's all personal preference there. Um, but yeah, so other than that, we'll get started on here and start tiling this back wall. So on this first row, I just have a little bit that I have to cut on the back here. So I'm just gonna scribe cut those. I'm not gonna use my wet saw and I'm not, I'm not, because even the wet saw, I mean, we're only taking like a blade's width off. So it's just gonna be easier to scribe cut it. As you can see, I have a kind of a little bit of a bench here so that I can work off of uh, to cut these tiles, just a piece of plywood. Um, as you also can tell, as I protected my tub, I put some ram board around here. That'll kind of keep you from scratching the inside of the tub. I'm notorious for doing that and something that I'm trying to improve on. So first step is, so first off, you can look at this thin set. You can see how nice and thick this is. It's like almost doesn't even want to fall off the trial. This is the real big difference between using this and something that you get at the home store or something that you get for 15 bucks a bag. Um, the non-sag quality of this is just gonna make it a lot easier to install. So first thing you wanna do is get it on the wall. So even, even looking at that, you know, I mean, it's pretty non-sag quality to it. If you got some stuff from the big box stores and mixed it, I guarantee it'll be sliding down the wall by now. So it really is worth the extra money and the time to go get this stuff. Um, but the first thing you wanna do is just use the back side of the trowel, burn the thin set into the substrate, basically using the flat side and moving it into position, and then do your directional troweling. And what this does is it kind of primes the surface and gets this embedded into this membrane, and then it'll allow you to make some nice ridge lines with your thin set. directional troweling. So I would say on this first row, just to get enough thin set to get on this first row, because we're gonna be scribe cutting, we're gonna be cutting things, and you don't want this stuff to sit on the wall for more than 10 minutes. So if you're taking longer than that, you're gonna have to scrape some of this off and reapply, because you don't wanna have this uh, skimming over. But the first thing, let's first just test a piece of this tile, make sure that we're gonna get the coverage that we want. So just like we were doing that, we're gonna back butter, and then we're gonna trowel it. And then we're gonna back butter the actual tile. So that's basically how the operation we're gonna be installing it on. So. Let's just see what this looks like. I forgot to mention one other tool that's really nice to use is a linoleum knife. As you can see, it has a nice little sharp corner here. It allows you to move tiles around, scrape out those grout joints. But so we got our tile set. Now let's just take a look at what kind of coverage we're getting. Look at that. You can see all of it suctioning off of here. There isn't any bald spots. This trout is going to definitely work well for these six by sixes. Uh, so, you know, all depends on whether you're getting this. If you're seeing a lot of lines and seeing a lot of bald spots, move up to the next trowel size. But this quarter by quarter premium notch trowel basically has these little ridges on it. 
really helps collapse them pretty nicely. So. So let me get my Okay, so we need to be at 29 and a half to the center. And then the most important thing is just paying attention to that laser and making sure you're seeing the tip of that hit my laser. And if you stay with that laser, it'll make everything a lot easier. I want to make sure I'm in the center, 29 and a half, 29 and a half, and we're good. We've got our little clip system here. So on the vertical seams, I usually just reference them by eye. I don't typically put a spacer in there, but it's all personal preference. But yeah, you just want to see the top of that laser right on there. And the main reason you want a, a gap between the tub here is so that when you caulk it, that caulking joint's gonna last a long time. If you don't have a gap here at the at the base and you just set your towel directly down on to the tub deck, for one, an acrylic tub will actually expand and contract. And you need a little bit of space there so you don't have any forcing of the tub against that. Now most of the time you're gonna fill up the tub and it's actually gonna uh, press down and you're gonna end up expanding that joint. But if you have a joint here, it allows the silicone to get into that joint and then make a really good solid connection. If you just have the towel butted straight down to the tub deck, you're just gonna smear the two surfaces. And then once you fill up that tub, it's just gonna crack that joint really quickly. So if you have a gap, like a 16th, eighth at most, it'll make that silicone joint last much longer and it's like less maintenance over time. Got my clip. Too. All right, so we'll go ahead and make a bunch of fives and a bunch of twos. All right, so a wet saw is not 100% necessary. You don't have to go out and rent one or spend, you know, $1,000 on a wet saw. But what it does do, it makes you a lot more efficient because I can cut multiple towels at once and be a little bit more accurate in a lot of senses. You can definitely use a slide cutter to do all of this, but it does make it faster and a little bit easier to do multiple cuts on this. So I'm just going to measure over my five inches and cut a bunch. Okay. So if you get this first road set nicely, Make the rest of this easy. Just pay, just pay attention to your vertical seams. Everything's in line. You can see that laser all the way across there. So at this point, let's first get, this is where that margin trowel kind of helps a little bit. Okay, so leveling clips for this. It might seem a little, a little bit too much for smaller tiles like this. But I'm telling you, these things make a big difference. These are called Tucson leveling clips. 
and they don't require anything else other than just your fingers to pinch them together. Now these are six by sixes. So most people would think that's kind of ridiculous to use that on these, but this down light is gonna show anything that you have uneven uh, you know, when you're installing these tiles. So I really think that these make a big difference with making sure that all your tile is aligned and you don't have to fuss around with it as much. You just pinch them together and they're ready to go. But you always want to back butter your tiles to make sure you're getting good coverage on things, set them in place, and then boom, you just pinch them together and it's all in a nice line. So really will up the get level of your bathroom remodel, even though it does take a little bit of extra time and sometimes you get a little bit of thin set in between the joints, uh, a little bit more cleanup. But if you stay with your laser, use these leveling clips, you'll have a nice flat wall. And then no matter what angle you look at, it's gonna look great. So the laser I have is the DeWalt um, green laser, as you can tell. Uh, but what's great about it is that it has many different features to it. It can do the vertical. A lot of them do all this same thing. But I do find that the green laser uh, is a little bit easier on the eyes for one. But secondly, on a red surface like this, it comes out better. And then when you have it on a stand that you can slide and adjust, it makes it a lot easier to go to row to row on it. So, but you can find my, all the tools that I like to use on my Amazon store. I have them categorized, so tile tools will have everything that I use here. And I do use this on a regular basis. This isn't something that I just picked up recently. This is something I've been using for years and years. And when you see my equipment, the way that it is, uh, you know, it's definitely a fact. I, def I definitely can upgrade and get some newer stuff, um, but it still works. So why, why change? Why change yet? So, All right, so we're going to go one more row and then we're going to cut in our niche. So, um, yeah, I think that'll be a good height. It's kind of, you know, when you're standing up, you'll be able to put your stuff here. Possibly when you're sitting down, you'll be able to be able to still reach that area. Um, so we're roughly going to be what 24 inches off the tub deck Yeah, 25. Yeah, 24. it will be about 24 inches. So that's all personal preference. It's really what you want um, But I had already framed this this was kind of planned ahead So I already have my two by sixes that I have for these walls in the location So all I'm gonna have to do is cut to those and then you know do the waterproofing obviously So on the niche, so we want to be cutting into this and, and the main reason that I'm not doing it on the back wall, which I typically do like to do like right in the center, but this is an exterior wall and you really can't put a recessed niche on an exterior wall or you won't have any insulation behind the actual niche. And the problem with that is the expansion contraction will end up cracking the grout joints. Plus it'll feel really cold in the winter, really warm in the summer. So this was not an option, but I can put them in the, coves because we basically framed walls on either side of the tub to enclose it so we can go ahead and put some niches in this way so what i'm going to be using is this uh what did they call this radius a radius bull nose so this will go into the niche slightly and this will wrap into the niche but i wanted to make sure that it goes in line with these grout joints so it looks like it was meant to be and the best way to make it be is to be able to cut in the niche after you get your tile set. It's always cumbersome to try to evaluate where your tile layer is going to be um, and to be perfect. So this is really gonna be the easiest way. So what we wanna do is allow this radius to overcome the corner. So really what this is, is about an inch and a quarter. And honestly, I wouldn't mind giving myself a little bit of extra room. I can always build up thin set underneath the bottom row of tile and the top row of tile. But if you're too high, then you're gonna have problems. So I would, I would recommend basically just coming an inch above your tile layer here and then cutting where you need to be. So let's go ahead and put my laser on this mark. 
and then uh, that's where we're gonna cut into. So let's go ahead and do that. It'll wrap around that corner nicely and basically go into the niche. So I'm gonna use my oscillating tool to do this. Let's go ahead and check what we're gonna be at the top here. So we'll put our leveling clips in here so that we're 100% accurate. Okay, so that's essentially where we're gonna be at the top here. Let's get our laser up onto that one. Let's drop this an inch. to do is cut this out now granted this is not a load bearing well this was just basically to frame this in so we won't have any concerns about really structurally um, it's just a matter of cutting that out so that we can allow this surface to go all the way into the niche Okay, so what I had to do here was notch this down a half inch down below this, my finished edge here, because I need to put some backer board on here. So you need to have some kind of drywall or something because we're gonna re-flash this with the membrane. So basically this two by six had to be notched a half inch beyond this area. So that's why I had to use the, the oscillating tool for that. So we're gonna mix this down to a wetter ratio because we're gonna be putting the membranes on the back of the niche. So I don't need a whole lot, but I need enough to do those niches. Eight and three eighths wide, 16 tall. 16 actually works out really well. You know, make sure that if you have a, um, you know, a bigger, soap bottle or something you're going to be able to fit in it so ultimately this is going to be about yeah eight and three eighths by 16 tall so really we need to cut this membrane down wide enough to go across the whole thing here Again, ideally, if I would have had a wide enough piece, I could have just wrapped that around and that would have been a nicer way to go. But I only had so much membrane, so we'll just have to fold the corner around it. And you can put in your corners. Okay, then just for the top areas, because I don't think it's really 
completely necessary to go crazy on the Okay, so all in all, this is going to give us a nice height here now. So now this mud cap will go over here pretty nicely, right up where we want it. But to be honest, it's definitely kind of, you know, when you're in a toweling mode, it kind of not exactly fun cutting this in and have to get back in the carpentry. It is a lot easier setting these niches um, during the framing stage. Uh, but this is going to get us more accurate, so it is definitely... A positive way to go because now you'll have all your joints exactly where you want them. Okay, so next day we didn't get very far because these niches held us back, but uh, yeah, just take a rubber mallet and just hit these clips with the joints and then you can clean them out. A scrubby pad and scrub any of that excess thin set off. And any, any clips that are still stuck in there, you can just cut them below the grout joint just using the utility knife. Obviously, being careful you don't cut your membrane down below. Make tiling easy on yourself by using a good thin set. I'm going to be using Ardex. X5 and it really is some of the best stuff out there. Non-sag quality to it, lasts a very long time in the bucket and uh, you know, you have to try it. It will make tiling much, much easier. Okay, so moving on with the rest of the, the uh, tiling here now that we have our niches already set now we can just set our towel going straight into these niches so we finished off here we made sure that everything was clean before the end of the day now we just have to set on top of it so got some earth thin set ready to go here all right so here's an issue i have a little bit of lippage on this back edge here because the membrane is pushing this tile out, kind of humping out a little bit from all the different layers of membrane. I'm just gonna take my grinder and grind down the back of the tile. So now we got, now we got this all nice and beveled. Now we can just add some more thin set and put it in place. But this is one of the problems with membranes. Um, anytime you have a membrane and you have overlap, especially around a niche like this, it's going to cause some problems. So that's why you need one of these grinder wheels to be able to do things like this. So whatever it takes to be able to get this in, in line with one another is the way you want to go about it. Now what did I do here? So I went wrong on one and right on the other the heck <laughs> why am I off oh you know I didn't subtract the inch over there I guess I'm gonna have to build that down oh that one is taller yeah hmm. I will so it's not the walls fault <laughs> it's most likely your fault so you can see here, I'm putting my tile in here and my membrane is pushing my tile out. So what I'm gonna do is grind down the back of the tile so I can make everything lippage free. So as you can see, I grinded this down quite a bit. Let's see if that fits now. Nice and even, so that's good. Take a margin trowel, just feather out the bottom so that you don't get 
excess thin set with your clips. Use a laser to align things so that everything's in a line and pay attention to that laser all the way through. So at the ceiling, you do want to provide a little bit of a gap because this will, just like the bottom of the tub, it'll make that caulking joint at the ceiling a lot stronger if you have a little gap for the thin or the uh, caulking to grab into. So we're going to be using a siliconized uh, caulking at the ceiling and then painting it the same color as the ceiling, which is just flat white. But if you provide a space, it'll last a lot longer and be able to grab better rather than just smearing it upon the surface in the drywall. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on with our plumbing wall. Now that we already have our height established, we just have to set our laser. And one thing that we're gonna be doing here is installing this bull nose tile on the outside of the wall. So it'll be just six by six bull nose that will go all the way up. Um, now this is fairly straight for the most part, but the membrane ends up kind of making this an uneven corner. And it's really important to make sure that when you set your tiles here, that we have something to reference to. So I'm just gonna use a piece of trim board here and I'm going to screw this into the bottom, into the side here. And this will basically allow me to butt my towel directly up here and I'll have a nice straight line. Otherwise, I'm trying to figure out where the edge of my corner is. And I don't want to have that kind of issue. I'd rather just have something I can butt this up to. And I know exactly where I'm going to be at. So this is um, an outside corner. I'm not really concerned about the waterproofing. I mean, I did obviously wrap it with the, the waterproofing, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to screw it right through here and this will be my establishing my corner. All right, so we got our board here established now. So all we have to do is butt our tile straight up to the straight edge. And then when we put our bull nose tile onto the outside edge, we'll have a nice straight line to come across. So typically what I like to do is just start out with a full tile, half tile pattern from your outside edge, since this is gonna be the part that really matters. And then just scribe cut or cut whatever it takes to get into the corner. So we're gonna go with, um, and what I'm gonna be paying attention to too, is try to offset this so that it looks like the tile is folding in the corner. So the way that this pattern's working out right here is basically it's gonna be a half piece in the corner as well. So when we come across here, we'll have a half piece into the corner, which will look like a folded full corner in the corner. So it's just all personal preference on how you want that to look. But in my mind is if the towel folds in the corner, it looks kind of like the pattern continues. So we're gonna start out with a three inch piece here. Uh, we don't have any cutting to do since this is the lower side of the tub. So we're able to just space this up and make this work. So really simple pattern. It's just a matter of getting around all the piping and all of the different aspects on the plumbing wall. We're going to use this diamond bit made by Cleed Tools. So what this is, is just a one inch hole saw bit. Plenty of diamonds around that. Okay, so to sharpen that up a little bit, we're going to use this cone too. This is a nice little tool to just get things a little bit wider around something like this.
All right, so we're gonna put our radius bull nose here and we're gonna overhang it. So we've got plenty of room underneath it here, but what I'm gonna be concentrating on now is just getting this area framed up with this as I work my way up and then I'll worry about the niche. I might even do the niche tomorrow as far as the tiling in it. Um, Cause you can easily just build up the sides and the bottom to meet this. Uh, but at this point, I just wanna get the rest of the tile up. So just let these overhang the, the niche and then we'll fill that in later tomorrow because it'll actually be easier when this is all stable to do that. But that'll look pretty slick. I mean, it's not a very big area. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take this board off. Okay, so same thing here. We're gonna put this ledger board up. So let's go ahead and get our laser down. Okay, and then let's just see what we're, that we gotta cut a little bit off of each one of these because of this side of the tub being a little less. Okay, then I don't, for some reason this is, needs to be built in. So I'm gonna put a piece of go board in here, five and a half. I always try to make these niches bigger than too small. Definitely, you can always shrink them down like I'm doing here. But if they're too small, and you're kind of screwed. But I don't know what I, how I mismeasured this one, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use some go board, then set that into place. In the old school bathrooms where they had the mud walls, and these would come up and crawl over top of the mud bed that was behind it. Yeah, that'll work out just fine. And then what I'll do is I'll build up thin set and make this even with the inside. So I'm not gonna tile the inside until tomorrow after all this sets. And I'll make it a little bit easier and then I can just build up the thin set over top of that go board. Now, I went too high on this too for some reason. So I'm gonna to have to build it down once I get up top here. And the reason I went with a niche on these back side walls is because this wall is an exterior wall and you don't wanna be doing, putting a, uh, putting this in a exterior wall because you wouldn't have any insulation behind it. So that'll work. Okay, moving up. Like the whole bathroom, the, the tile here was about two grand. It's about a thousand dollars more than I wanted it to be, but you know, it's 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 basically all these. You know, the floor was about ten dollars a square foot. This stuff was about five, and then all the bull nose is kind of where they get you. 
I mean, it is, it is no doubt a little bit easier in a lot of ways to towel this without those leveling clips. It's just around the plumbing wall. Now, I was just really sensitive about this wall because that's the money shot. That's the shot when I scroll my camera up, you'd see any type of imperfection. So that's why I thought it was worth doing the leveling system on. I don't know, you, you could do it either way. It's just, these definitely kind of make sure that everything stays in line. I mean, it's definitely is kind of a, an overkill thing to do that, but the plumbing wall had all types of membranes that I was trying to overcome. So it just made it a little bit easier to use that because it just pinched everything tightly to where you needed it. I think I did, I forgot to subtract the inch, but I'm, uh, I'm basically, I need a lot. I need a lot. I'm gonna have to double up a couple, honestly. Holy cow. I'm not sure how I did not get this at the right height, but more go board it is to build this niche in. So like seven and three quarter by five and a half. And by the way, I would use go board all day long versus any of this membrane brain crap. I mean, I, the membranes are great, but uh, I mean, and they do, they serve the purpose, but they're a pain in the ass compared to just using some foam board like this. It's a heck of a lot easier. I really have no idea how I miscut my opening here. But I'd rather be this way than the other way. The other way would be a lot more painful. So we'll go one more board. And I never really liked the niches that are just all the way on the back wall. I mean, it's all personal preference, but I thought these were, this is different. This is something I haven't done before with uh, the niches, having matching ones on either side. All right, so that should buffer me out now, or buffer me down, I should say. If you guys haven't been following me on YouTube or anything, basically this is a flip house that I'm on. Um, I, I'm calling it a flip because it was something I bought when I was like 21 years old, a long time ago. So, you know, it, uh, it's been a long time waiting to get this bathroom redone, but I'm fixing everything up and selling it, moving on. I don't wanna, I've been renting it for the last 15 years. And uh, it's been great, as far as the most part. Uh, but, you know, it definitely has its moments, even though that I'm the one who always fixes everything. It's just, you know, it, honestly, I'm, I'm just over the renting game. I, I don't wanna be called, I think I was called on Christmas last year because the furnace went out. Not that it was the tenant's fault. I mean, it's a good reason to call me, um, but you know, it just doesn't really, it doesn't really make all that much money at the end of the day. I mean, I'm gonna make money when I sell this, but you know, renting it just, every couple of years I had to re-carpet and redo things and just it was never really worth it. So it's time to sell. I mean, in the way this market's going right now, I, I don't really, foresee things going up in value for quite a while until they lower those interest rates. So and the amount of money that I put into this place, man, I, it would take me two years to recoup that money. I mean, I would increase the rent obviously because this would be a nice place, but you know, I am concerned about this economy though, for sure, because I think people are gonna get really pinched here soon. And I don't want to be the I don't want to be the landlord that has to kick anybody out. I've never had to do that, uh, and I definitely don't want to ever have to do that because you know I know how hard it is to fall behind and ruin your credit and not be able to you know afford things because you can't get a loan or you can't be able to buy a house, and that's you know really not it's really not fair in a lot of ways. You know, especially depending on the reason for the bankruptcy. Um, you know, if you went bankrupt, I should say. 
And I, I had gone bankrupt in 2005. And it was basically because I was too aggressive with con contracting. I, uh, I had about, how many guys? I had about nine guys working for me at one point. And uh, I was working for a lot of investors that weren't paying me like really well. And I mean, it was all, you know, part of my own problem. I, I didn't charge enough for what I was doing. I got behind on taxes on the guys and uh, the IRS basically seized all my assets. And then when I couldn't move, like when I couldn't do anything, I had houses to sell, but they weren't letting me sell them unless I paid off the debt. I couldn't pay off the debt because I, didn't, I needed to sell the <laughs> homes. So I went bankrupt. I did like a, what do you call it? Chapter 13, where you pay everything back, get into an agreement, it destroyed my credit, but it took, it did take about seven years, just like way most people say, it takes seven years and you can get, you can get back to it. It just takes a long time, you know, but I didn't, you know, honestly, they should have worked with me a little bit better. Maybe I wouldn't have listened. I don't know. I was only 26 when that happened. So I was just stressed out and thinking that I didn't think it was going to go away, but I just didn't think the IRS would have done what they did. So live and learn businesses. I mean, so I've never, I've never had an employee since I have, I have not, I mean, I've hired a couple guys here and there to help me on some things as a subcontractor, but I never went back to actually, um, hiring people. I just won't get into that employee stuff. It's just too expensive. And uh, the government definitely is not friendly if you don't pay things on time. So you gotta learn things the hard way sometimes, but I, you know, one of the, it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. I learned so much from it. Uh, you know, and who knows how, how, how many people I would have had working for me now. I mean, this, the sad thing is I would have probably fixed up, you know, probably hundreds of more homes here in Pittsburgh uh, if I would have kept going. So that's the sad part. I mean, I was really highly motivated, but just didn't have the business sense to really know what I was charging, making sure I was charging enough. So we're good. So yeah, I mean, I, I got into tiling and doing bathrooms back in 2008. That's when I really started just doing nothing but bathrooms. And uh, I guess I was ultimately just tired of doing everything. I was doing roofing, siding, windows, gutters, you know, whatever, whatever anybody asked me to do, I would do. And, uh, you know, decks, I actually still like doing decks. I don't mind doing decks. Um, but you know, all he did was get calls for everything. And I bought a house and I, uh, a different house and my wife, well, she wasn't my wife then, but at the time she was my girlfriend and she, since I was broke, uh, or since I went bankrupt, I didn't have any credit and she went ahead and took the leap and bought a house with me. And, uh, which was, a, you know, honestly, looking back, I mean, that's a pretty bold move to put all that money in and have me fix it up like that. But, uh, I did have a nice, really big bathroom there, probably like a 10 by eight bathroom. And, uh, you know, I started taking pictures of that and started putting them online. And then the next thing you know, I was getting calls for bathrooms. And ever since I went the bathroom route, my business just continued to multiply and it was just so much easier getting jobs. If you, if you uh, narrow yourself down to a certain specific task or a specific field, get down into your niche, 
you, you know, it's going to work so much better. It kind of, it kind of steamrolls on its own. When you're doing a bunch of, a whole bunch of different things, no one, you know, a lot of times people don't even really respect that you know what you're doing, uh, even though you probably do and you've done all types of different things all your life. But um, people want to hear or see the name like, you know, bathroom uh, remodeling as they're, spe you know, the, I always kind of laugh in some ways because I used to do that. But seeing like roofing, siding, windows, bathrooms, kitchens, like, you know, in some ways you can't be an expert in on everything. Some ways you have to um, get into a niche because there's just so much stuff and different methods and different things to keep up with. You can't keep up with it all. Um, so, you know, I mean, you're going to find if you do these things over and over again, like I've done one bathroom after another, after another, I've gotten much more efficient, much more faster. So I was making more money. I wasn't really necessarily raising my prices. It was just that I was getting faster at the project. Now that sometimes bites you in the ass too, because some of the clients get kind of aggravated um, by seeing, you know, you only take five days to do their whole bathroom and it costs you, cost them over 25 grand to do. Um, but, you know, it's on the flip side, there's other contractors that, you know, sub everything out and, you know, it can take three months to get a bathroom done. So, you know, I'd rather be yelled at or not yelled at, but just kind of being, well, geez, that was a lot of money for you on here for being a week. I'd rather hear that than, hey, like, when are you going to get my project done? Um, but I guess my advice to any contractor would be to try to narrow your niche. Get down into, like, a specific thing, you know. Um, obviously, getting licensed makes a lot of sense. That kind of narrows you down and forces you to. Uh, but uh, that isn't the end that will be all. I don't believe licenses are great, but, um, you know, that's sometimes the amount of time that you put into that it's still kind of um, tough to make really good money at it. So, um, you know, if you're a contractor, maybe just, uh, you know, if, if you specialize in windows, you're gonna get a lot more window jobs and you're gonna get a lot faster at it, is all I'm saying. But bathrooms I went into because I liked the appeal. It was easy to advertise. You just take a picture of a bathroom and everybody's like, wow, that's really awesome. They want one like them themselves. Uh, so the app marketing is pretty simple. You just take a picture and it's, it's gonna go go viral to a certain extent whereas you know windows doors stuff like that that's kind of hard to to market a little bit because it's not as sexy as the as the towel work but i should mention that when i did go into the bathrooms and i was turning down work because i only wanted to do bathrooms that was in 2008 so that was not a comfortable time to be saying no to work because it was everybody was freaking out about the stock market, kind of like they are right now, and uh, no one really knew what was going to happen. Kind of like now, but you know, it only takes a couple of bathroom jobs to set yourself up well. You know, you just have to make sure that you're keeping that pricing up. Don't be going out there and doing all this stuff for nothing. I think the first bathroom I ever did was like six grand for, I, I, had, a, I had a lot of materials involved with that one. But yeah, I made nothing by the end of it. You know, I always, always had like a lot of investors trying to keep me down to six grand per bathroom and it's just not profitable. You can't, it's too much time, you know? I mean, this, I'm, I'm here all day doing this tub surround right now. I mean, I'm not making it easy on myself putting these niches in here. That definitely hogs up a little bit more time. Okay, so next day, I really highly recommend that you definitely remove all these clips the next morning. It's definitely gonna make it easier because once this thin set completely hardens, it gets a lot harder to scrape anything out of the joints. So with leveling clips, with any type of spacer, the punishment is the cleanup. <laughs> so there's no easy way out, even though that's really helping to keep the wall level. It takes a little bit more um, you know, effort to actually clean. So I would recommend a scrubby pad. And again, my favorite non-tile tool 
is this linoleum knife. So having a nice sharp tip like this allows you to scrape those joints easily. So we'll get started on it. Um, basically, I'm just gonna use a rubber mallet to hit these with the joints and just remove all of these clips. Okay, then any clip that actually kind of stuck in the tile, you just take a utility knife and cut it below the grout joint, as long as like a 16th inch behind it. That's all you really need. So some of these are gonna get stuck in there just because you had thin set around them. So obviously be careful not to cut the membrane behind the tile. Okay, so we're gonna finish off our outside edge, got everything cleaned, ready to move on to um, putting the tiles down the rest of the side of the tub here. So one thing you wanna do right at the corner here is be able to go with the concave of the actual tub. So just giving a little bit of a curve to it. So what I'm gonna do is just to continue with that little curve around the tub is use so as you can see, it's like a cone shape. Now provide a nice curve on this. One thing about tile, everyone's got an opinion. Can't really win. The one thing I am tired of seeing though is the, is the metal edging. Um, I've been doing a lot of that, mainly because tile manufacturers aren't selling the edging with a lot of tiles anymore. So everyone's kind of going with a Schluter edge. Doesn't look bad, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I like all the, the actual pieces like this. Okay, so now that we have this completely recessed down below, we can just fill this to fit our tile to meet up with our edging. So right now, I'm kind of at the max of where my, yeah, I'm about three quarters of an inch. So really you don't want to have your thin set much more than a half inch thick. This is quarter inch tile, so that's about where we're gonna be. But you can also put additional tile underneath of here and build it up. Or if you had go board, uh, some kind of foam board, you can continue to build it up that way. Uh, but in this instance, I'm just gonna be able to use 
thin set to do that. Make sure that we're pitching this so that water doesn't sit in the back. All right, hey guys. So I was wanted to demonstrate just a small portion of this towel project. So if you see behind me, I already have the whole tub surround done in a simple six by six pattern here. So now that we got the tub all set, now we're gonna just do a little bit of area here on the wainscoting. And I wanted to just go over just a couple, couple of tools that you probably see, if you follow me, you've seen me use a hundred times. Um, one being these knee pads. So these knee pads are tremendous. They're called uh, Pro Knees 01 or 0714 is actually the model. So, uh, but these are great because they don't, uh, they don't take the circulation off the back of your knees. A lot of regular knee pads, you got one up here and one down here. And then, you know, about an hour later, you can't feel anything in your legs. So. These are really, really helpful. After having the laser, I use this as my scraping tool. Uh, my favorite horse, my favorite spacers are the horseshoe shims. And um, I usually do have a couple of grinders on me. I have one just with a regular blade on it and then one that you can grind down the tile. This was actually really helpful for uh, around my niches because I did a membrane. So the membrane bumped out a little bit and I needed to basically sand down the back of the tile. It's also good for making additional accurate cuts as well. But the other tool that I really use a lot in the, in the home is a grinder with a shop vac attached to it. So when I use the, uh, the drill or the, uh, the grinder, it turns on the shop vac and sucks the dust out of there. So th this I use a, a, quite a bit. It's just tough to see the blade, so I don't really use that on like real accurate cuts. It's more, I mean, I'll do that for this, like scrap cutting the bottom of the base. Uh, but when it comes to being something like, you know, that you're really gonna see, that's when I would go with the other grinders. So definitely not necessary to have three different grinders, but it definitely is nice to have different blades on them. Oh. So um, this trial was pretty cool too. I actually just bought this. I was, this is a quarter by quarter, but it has a, a funky little pattern on it. Um, I kind of like it. It kind of replicates like the Euro trowel uh, as far as having a, a bigger ridge and a smaller ridge. It seems to work really well as far as collapsing the ridges. I mean, that's one thing you really want to do on any tile. You can't really just state, hey, I'm just going to be going with a quarter by quarter. And that's definitely going to do it. Most likely, that'd be totally sufficient for a six by six, but you really don't want to rely on that. You want to find out what your substrate is and establish it based off of what it looks like. So, you know, the first thing you always do is take the backside of the trowel and burn it into the substrate. So whatever that is, this is obviously just drywall, so it's gonna be really easy, but then you just directionally trowel, and you'll see me doing this over and over again here shortly, but I just wanted to demonstrate this. This is how basically every time I go do a tile job, this is what I do. I, I I basically thin set everything as if I was going to be setting the tile and just establish what I'm getting here. So, I mean, quarter by quarter, you're pretty much going to definitely be getting full coverage like that. But uh, you just want to be sure. And if you're not getting it, and if you're seeing some bald spots for any reason, go up to the next trial size. You know, sometimes cement board or sometimes different rougher surfaces don't... Uh, you know, they don't get, they don't get the, the amount of coverage you want. You might want to move up to that next uh, trial size. So, and, and this is more important. Um, I mean, it's important for every application, but really when it comes to flooring, that's where you see most of the problems with coverage that are, you know, things aren't, um, you know, well adhered 
is because of, you know, maybe the floor is a little bit uneven and you're using those plank tile or some longer tile that has a bow in it and then you're just not getting the coverage in the middle of the tile. So if you're doing bigger tile, if you're doing 12 by 24s or anything bigger than that, definitely check your coverage. You might want to go up to like a half by half. I wouldn't recommend a, a quarter by quarter for, you know, a larger tile like that anyways, but um, you're going to need the larger trowel, but you know, you really should have multiple size trowels on you and then, you know, establish what, uh, what the kind of coverage you're really getting. So first thing I'm going to do is I have my laser on my uh, edging piece here. So I'm just trying to basically match uh, what's existing that I have on my tub surround. And let's go ahead and get a center point. See that's 19 and 3 eighths? Yeah, 19 and 3 eighths. Just see what this gives us. It gives us about an inch. So you have an one inch four inches. See what, what we would do if we went this way. So that's like inch and three quarter. That inch and three quarter would look better. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with my full, full half pattern here in the corner and then I'll have an inch and three quarter and then a four and three quarter piece going on here. So it's going to feel like you're bringing the tile from outside from the shower and bringing it over and where it ends at the trim is where it ends. Um, really all personal preference point, but I don't want to see an inch on either side. I don't think that's going to, that's going to be too slender in the corners. I prefer having a good, um, almost a two inch piece would be ideal, uh, on that. So, all right, so we got to scribe cut all of these bottom tiles because this is a little bit higher than our lowest point So five and five eighths. Come off of that. So I meant to say, you should dampen down your drywall a little bit before you spread the thin set. That'll kind of keep it from absorbing out. But even on drywall though, I really wouldn't go more than two rows of tile or as far as spreading the thin set because you don't want this stuff to skin over. Otherwise you have to, you know, kind of scrape it off and start over. These are where these horseshoe shims are awesome. Very easy to install, much better than those um, rubber ones you get at the box stores. These little wedges here, these little red ones, these are nice because you can get a little bit more accurate and just kind of pinch them where you need to, or, you know, shim them up where you need to. So this joint's not exactly 100% even vertically. I'm always paying attention to my vertical joints too. So if I got to shim this up just slightly to make that happen, I'd, you know, rather do that than having it carried away. So pay, pay attention to the small minute details. That's really what it takes. This is like the clips I like to use on smaller tiles like this is the Tucson leveling clip. Um, so you just basically set them in here and then they just pinch together. So they're not cheap. They definitely add up, but they definitely, you know, it kind of pinches everything together, make sure everything's in, a, in, in line with each other. So on that back wall where it had all that down light, you know, that really, especially like mid-level, you can see any little bit of shadow. So I really was concerned. And that's all coming from experience because I've, I've done it before. And then after everything was done, after everything was grouted, uh, you could see some of the shadow. And it wasn't like you could feel it like that much with your hand, it wasn't like super, a whole lot of lippage, but it was enough to, you know, the 4K camera definitely picked it up and, you know, so. Are you going to charge, are you charging by the cost of square foot? No, no, definitely not. I'm going by, I mean, each job is different. I never got into that square footage game because people didn't just fight you on what other people are. It's just the, just like the race to the bottom in a way. And 
there's just so many different intricacies with this. So I'm always like somebody who goes by the day. So I kind of look at a job like, okay, I should be able to tile that in three days or four days and just go by that. And then whatever the square footage, the square footage is. So if you were gonna have me do like a herringbone style tile job in here, it's, you know, it's gonna take me all week to do that um, because of the, just the, the prep of the tile um, layout and the intricacies of installing that. So, you know, the square footage might be double what it would be if you just, if I was just doing this. So, and in marble, stone, all of that, you can't, I mean, you can, you can figure out your own square foot price, but again, I, I just don't, I don't like that question. When people ask that, I don't even go out and look at their jobs because I, they, I know they're going to be, they're just going to be a pain in the ass. They're just not going to be somebody that I want to work for. Uh, anybody who is, I mean, who was asking that question, um, I've just never, I never had a good outcome with them. They're always fighting you about something uh, with the price at some point. So I would stay away from the square footage pro question though. This is nice because these tiles are, this, this mosaic is thicker. So you can see how thick that is. That's not usually the case anymore. Most of the time now, these things are half this thick, but this is still thick enough where it's basically just as thick as the tile. So it works out great. If you just have the, the continuous thin set layer there, you should be able to just put that in place. Now, if you don't, I would recommend putting this on a membrane. So if this mosaic was not as thick as the actual tile, then I would go ahead and use something like this, a membrane. This is Schluter Curdy. And you can thin set this onto this like the night before, cut it off, and then you can embed it into um, your system. If, if it was thin and you just needed to do it right now and you don't have time to wait for that, then maybe something like this, the Schluter Ditra, cutting down strips of this to get behind the tile to bump it out. Um, really just whatever it takes to get this even with the outside is what you want because there's nothing worse to me than looking at an indented tile layer uh, for something like this. So trying to keep it even um, is key. So let me grab my grout flute too. 